For our first night safari experience, we travel to Tai Mo Shan, the highest peak in Hong Kong. Its 1,440 hectares of natural territory acts as a sanctuary for the amazing diversity of wildlife in Hong Kong. We are here to meet William Sargent and Ryan Hammond, who will take us on a unique snake safari adventure. Yeah, I'm William Sargent. I take small groups of people out into the country parks looking for snakes. And the reason why we like Tai Mo Shan is that the jungle here is mature and dense. So if you look around you, it's thick jungle. And this is critical for wildlife and wildlife spotting. Over the years, we've seen about 20, 25 species of snakes here. Out of Hong Kong's 43 known species of snakes, it's a good place to come to look for wildlife. Okay, let's go find some snakes. It's really thick, really big fat female She's in the tree. pretty high. So there's two things that I try to convince people about snakes or try and teach them about snakes. There's a common misconception that snakes chase you. So a lot of people, they come out with stories, oh, I was coming home and this snake chased me. It's just simply not true. Snakes don't chase people. Um, they may be going your way trying to find safety, but they're not chasing you. The second thing is a lot of people think if you get bitten by a snake, it's a matter of minutes before you drop dead. In Hong Kong, we have some extremely venomous snakes, including the many banded crate that we saw tonight that got away. Um, this snake is in the top 10 most venomous snakes in the world. But yet, if this snake bites you, we have access to really good hospitals in Hong Kong. You can go to the hospitals and get treated, and it's very effective. There is a gecko hanging out. He's hanging upside down. That's his belly, the white underbelly, because the top will be much more camouflaged. The favorite snack for our bamboo viper that we're searching for. So let's keep looking. Oh, snake. Look at this. Awesome. Wow. Redneck keelback. This is a venomous and poisonous snake. One of the only known species to be venomous and poisonous. Their preferred diet is the toads that we've been seeing all over the mountain tonight. Um, what's interesting about these guys is they have a little gland on the back of their neck here which just secretes a poison, the same as what you get in the toads. And it's one of the only snake species that does that. It's a, it's a defensive mechanism. There's about 150 snake bites a year. Most of those are from a bamboo snake. So in the unlikely chance that you get bitten by a snake in Hong Kong, there's a few things you should do. One is stay calm. As I say, snake bite is very treatable in Hong Kong. You're not going to drop dead. Try and ID the snake, helps, but don't waste any time to do it. Don't try and kill the snake. If it's available, get a, get a photo. And obviously, you call an ambulance. You go to hospital, and they can work out usually what kind of snake has bitten you and whether it's actually envenomated you. There it is. It's a civet. Look at that, can you see? Oh, two, two, it's two. What a sighting. I've never seen two. Is that a baby? Wow. There's a little birdie asleep on the tree there. You see? I think it's a tailor bird. Look at this. So this is actually a greater green snake that often gets mistaken for the bamboo pit viper. It's totally harmless. And this is a worm eater. It eats worms. Um, often see them asleep at the trees at night. So maybe this guy's just come down from there. Really pretty snake. That's a great find. What's your feeling about snakes? So scared. Alright guys, we're nearly at the end here. Um, I thought it was a great night. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, another great night. Weather conditions were awesome. Couple of snakes. We got to see a couple of snakes. We got to see civet cats and we got to see quite a bit of wildlife. Um, I had no idea that you could see this sort of stuff in Hong Kong, so it was a really unique experience. Hong Kong's nighttime thrills continue well beyond the shoreline. Underneath the blue-green waves of Sai Kung is a treasure trove teeming with life and color, waiting to be explored. 
Hi, my name's Alex. I'm from Cycling Scuba, and tonight we're going to go to Basalt Island to night dive. So this afternoon, we already went to Basalt Island. The conditions were beautiful, the weather was great. I'm super excited and eager to show you guys one of my favorite dive sites in Hong Kong, Basalt Island. We finally arrived here. As you can see, the weather's still pretty nice. Basalt Island is a very nice dive site with multiple levels. You can do multiple levels of diving. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the intermediate level in the middle. The abilities here is endless. Basalt Island is nice because it's like a mystery box. You open it and you don't know what you get. It can be every time something different. So let's get ready to dive. Hong Kong is a city that never sleeps, with no shortage of things to do and see, even when the sun is down. Diving at night is one of the best kept secrets of the city, where you can easily spot many unique species of nocturnal sea creatures, such as the vibrant Clark's anemone fish, the blue crab with its distinct coloring, and the majestic zebra short fin lionfish. Swathed by the South China Sea, Hong Kong is situated in a marine biodiversity hotspot, hosting more than a quarter of all marine species recorded in China's waters. Hong Kong's underwater ecosystem is extremely rich and diverse, and is home to over 6,500 species of plants, coral, fish, crustaceans, and invertebrates. Our waters have more species of hard coral than the Caribbean, and more types of mangrove trees than the whole of East Africa. Take a dive into the ocean around the number of islands and marine parks at night for a glimpse of the seas of anemones hiding clownfish of all shapes and sizes, and other magnificent creatures in their natural habitat. What an awesome night dive, yeah. I saw so many things, really interesting things. The octopus, a little eel, loads of shrimp, like thousands of shrimp. It's very cool, very relaxed, brilliant. All right, guys, this dive today was amazing. We saw so many cool things in this awesome visibility that we're very lucky to have. Lots of octopus, moray eel swimming around freely, shrimp galore, so many different species of shrimp. In the end, everybody's very happy, and I can say, Basalt Island night diving, full on success. Hong Kong's dazzling skyline is best viewed from above, and Victoria Peak offers one of the best vantage points in the city. Roland Sharman is a passionate outdoor enthusiast and founder of HK Outsider, dedicated to exploring Hong Kong's great outdoors. We're joining Roland and his team on a night hike up to the peak. So this is the start of the area. We're going to work our way through a pretty well-trodden path. It's not all concrete, so you need to be careful. There's some loose rocks. Are we likely to see any wildlife on this scramble today? There is wildlife around. There are snakes. Porcupines are in the area. One thing people are always concerned about is uh, the snake. I always like to remind people that snakes are more scared of you than you are of them. So just stay still and wait for them to move along. Almost at the area where we're going to start doing the climb up the rocks, so it gets a bit vertical in a second. We actually do this hike. 5.30 in the morning. It's a fabulous little exercise run for those that want to get up, have a good uh, workout before they go to work. You guys okay there? Watch that loose stone in the middle. Always try and keep your weight forward when you're moving through this terrain. I always say use the balls of your feet, those the toes and the balls of your feet will naturally bring your knee forward and your weight forward and then you'll have more traction. You don't always have to place your whole foot. The balls in your feet and your toes are enough, especially when you're going up. Just take a sec, look up. Focus on where you're going, that's it, well done. Hey ladies, we have two ropes here. Be a little bit careful because they're wet. This is quite easy. 
hold the rope and use your upper body strength and lean back. The more you lean back, the more energy will be transferred to your feet, the more traction you have. I think we're done that now. Oh. Okay, next. Jen, you okay? Struggling. Come on, Jen, you can do it. Always pulling, always using your upper body strength so you have the traction in your feet. Well done, keep going. Well done, Gabe. Thank you. You okay, ladies? Rule number one for me is don't touch anyone's ropes. Use the tree branches, use the tree stumps, use the tree roots because they're very well embedded in the soil and very solid. Get your hand on this tree here. You're almost there. And turn around and have a look at the Hong Kong skyline. Smiles. Well done, kids. Whee! How did you start with Hong Kong Outsider anyway? Well, it was about bringing people along who I thought perhaps needed some help to overcome um, various different fears. We get everyone to truly live in the moment, trying to raise awareness for mental health in a really cool adventure environment. And that was kind of the nucleus of how Hong Kong Outsider started. So, after all this, have you overcome your fear of heights? No. You need that fear. It keeps you honest when you're approaching risk. It keeps you on point. It keeps you focused. You just need to keep pushing yourself, practice and practice and practice until it becomes not so scary anymore. Elbows in. Everybody, you guys did really well. That is a very challenging route. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Amazing. I can't believe we made it up the side of the mountain. Well, you certainly had an adventure today exploring yourself as well as Hong Kong.